Before we go on from what we were talking about on uh, section 3.1, parallel lines and transversals, I want to go back and revisit some things that we did earlier in the year uh, on two intersecting lines. When two, inter two lines intersect, they obviously create four angles. Those angles have relationships. Some of those angles are linear pairs, and then some of them are vertical angle pairs. So let's review what linear pairs. Linear pairs are two adjacent angles that are supplementary, or two adjacent angles um, that make a straight line. Linear pairs, out of these four, one and two, linear pair, they make a straight line. Two and three, linear pair, they make a straight line. Three and four, linear pair, they make a straight line. And four and one, linear pair, they make a straight line. Now, because they make a straight line, they are supplementary. And we can also say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180. Let's add degrees out here on all of these. Okay, so measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees. The measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. The measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180 degrees. The measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 1 equals 180 degrees. Those are linear pairs. Very important relationships when we have two intersecting lines. And we're going to be using those later uh, because... Transversals are lines who intersect two or more lines at different points. And when they cross those lines, they're going to create linear pairs. They're also going to create vertical angle pairs. Vertical angle pairs are the non-adjacent angles of two intersecting lines. Non-adjacent. Well, one and two are adjacent. Which ones are not adjacent? 1 and 3 are not adjacent, 2 and 4 are not adjacent. Adjacent meaning they're not, we don't share a fence. Do not share a common side or a common vertex. Okay, okay? Do not share a common side. Non-adjacent means we do not share a common side. Uh, vertical pairs do will share a common vertex, but not a common side. So what pairs are vertical pairs? Angles 1 and 3 are vertical pairs, non-adjacent pairs of intersecting lines, angles of intersecting lines. Angles 2 and 4 are vertical pairs, non-adjacent angles of, of two intersecting lines. Now, vertical pairs are congruent. We've proven that, and that uh, proof is due to vertical angle theorem. So the vertical angle theorem has told us that, allowed us to prove that vertical angles are congruent. Well, because they're congruent, we can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And we can say the measure, because of the definition of congruent angles, we can say the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Okay? Vertical angle theorem says that we can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, the definition of vertical of congruent angles allows us to say the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. And likewise, we can say, because of the vertical angle theorem, angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, and because of the definition of congruent angles, we can say the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 4. Now, very important uh, concepts for us to get down to make sure we understand. Because where we're going from here in our next section and what we're going to be doing for a whole lot of the rest of the year is we're going to be putting together angle relationships. I told you some time ago there's three basic angle relationships that you're going to be using 95% uh, of the time. Angles are going to be supplementary which means we will add them to equal 180 degrees or they'll be complementary, at which point we will add them in order to equal 90 degrees. The other thing is, they are congruent, in which case we will set them equal to each other, okay, in order to solve problems. And that's where we're going to be going with transversals here in the next section. 
It's very important to concepts to get down, understand, and learn. Memorize this, understand it, understand what vertical pairs are, understand what their relationships are, understand what linear pairs are, and what their relationships are uh, in order to create algebraic expressions. Now we're going to look at uh, what we talked about with vertical angles and linear pairs. Then we're going to go back into 3, 1, and we're going to look at those angle relationships that transversals make with their lines that they intersect. And we're going to come in with a particular situation. This particular situation is we have a transversal line B. Uh, it's not a very good B there. Let's just make it a little slower case B and get over that, okay? Little B. Okay, line B is a transversal for line L and line P. Now, there's something very particular about line L and line P. What is the relationship between line L and line P? Notice that it has these indications right here, these little arrowheads right here. What do those little arrowheads mean about line L and line P? That's right. It means that they are parallel. That we learned earlier, we're coming back to. So what we're saying is that line B is a transversal of two parallel lines. Okay, parallel meaning two lines in the same plane, coplanar lines, two lines in the same plane that do not meet or intersect. Okay, now there's some particular relationships about those angles and relationships we talked about with transversals and, and the lines that they intersect. When we have parallel lines, that transversal is cutting and intersecting parallel lines. So let's go into those. Corresponding angles of parallel lines are congruent. Well, what are the corresponding angles of this particular transversal? Remember that corresponding angles are on the same side. One is exterior, one is interior. Oh, by the way, what are the interior angles of this drawing? Interior being between the two lines that the transversal cuts between, inside. So we can draw a circle here and say these are the inside angles. 4, 3, 5, and 6. Our 3, 4, 5, and 6 are our interior angles. Now, what does that leave 1, 2, 8, and 7 to be? Obviously, interior and exterior. So 1, 2, 7, and 8 are the exterior angles. Okay, so corresponding angles of parallel lines are congruent. Corresponding is there's one exterior, one interior, and they're on the same side of the transversal. 1 and 5 are congruent. 2 and 6 are congruent. 4 and 8. 4 and 8 are congruent, and so are 3 and 7. They are congruent. So corresponding angles of parallel lines are congruent. Okay? So if we had algebraic expressions for those angles, then we could set them equal to each other. All right, that simply means that the measure of angle one is going to equal the measure of angle five. The measure of angle two is going to equal the measure of angle six. The measure of angle four is going to equal the measure of angle eight. The measure of angle three is going to equal the measure of angle seven. And we know that simply by definition of congruent angles. Call this the corresponding angle postulate. Okay, corresponding angle postulate. Now, other angle relationships that are also congruent. Alternate interior angles of parallel lines are congruent. Now, alternates, it means it's on opposite sides of the transversal, and one will be next to one of the lines, and the other will be next to the other. Interior means interior, so it has to be one of the interior angles. So, 4 and 6. 4 and 6. Angle 4 and 6 are congruent. Angle 3 and 5 are congruent. They're known as alternate interior angles. Okay? They are congruent. And the alternate exterior angles of parallel lines are also congruent. What are the alternate exterior? Exterior, opposite sides, 1 and 7 are congruent. Okay? Non-adjacent exterior angles on opposite sides. Okay? Alternate means non-adjacent, so it can't be 2. Exterior, on exterior, alternate means opposite sides, so it can't be 1 and 8, so it's 1 and 7. Okay? So 1 and 7 are congruent, and then 2 and 8 are congruent. Okay? This also means that their measures are congruent. Alright? 
right? So corresponding angles of parallel lines, alternate interior angles of parallel lines, alternate exterior angles of parallel lines are all congruent. It means we can set those pairs of angles equal to each other in order to solve problems. Now, let's look over here on this side where we've got a different type of relationship with what we call the same side angle pairs of parallel lines. They are what? They're supplementary. What does that mean about those pairs of angles? What can we do with those pairs of angles? That's right. We can add them together and they will equal 180 degrees. So those angles, if we have algebraic expressions or equations for them, we can set them, add them together to set them equal to 180. Same side interior angles, so same side. Same side of the transversal inside the parallel lines, so 3 and 6, 4 and 5, 4 and 5 and 3 and 6, they are supplementary pairs. That means that we can say the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180. You can also say the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6 equals 180. Okay, now what do we also call, learned in 3 1, what do we also call same side interior angles? What are they also known as in the geometry world? Consecutive interior angles. Same side interior angles are also known as consecutive interior angles. Now, some books and some Courses are not even going to have same side exterior angles, but we're going to teach you same side exterior angles. Why? Because they have important relationships that you need to know. Same side exterior angles, okay, 2 and 7, 1 and 8, they're on the same side and exterior to the parallel lines. They are also supplementary. So all the same side angle pairs of parallel lines are supplementary. That means that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 8 equals 180. The measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 7 equals 180. Okay? So the same side angle pairs of parallel lines are supplementary. It's one set of relationships. What did I tell you about angle pairs? About 75% of the time what's going to happen on angle pairs is they're either going to be supplementary or they're going to be congruent. Another 15 to 20 percent of the time, they're going to be complementary. Okay, if they're supplementary, we add them together to equal what? 180. What we've done is set up this side over here, so the same side is supplementary. Same side, SS, supplementary. Same side, supplementary. Come up with some way that you can remember the same side interior angle. Pairs of parallel lines are supplementary. Same side exterior angle pairs of parallel lines are supplementary. Now, if it doesn't start with same side, what is it? Corresponding is congruent. Corresponding angles of parallel lines are congruent. Corresponding congruent. Come up with a way that you can remember that. Alternate. If it's an alternate pair, they are congruent. Corresponding and alternate pairs of, of angles of parallel lines are congruent. Very important relationships for you to know and for you to remember. Get them down somewhere where you can use them on tests, whatever you need to do there. Get those memorized. Put them on your note cards that you're going to study the very last time, the last few minutes before you take a test. Get those on note cards. Do something so you remember these. These are very important relationships when we're considering transversals, angles of parallel lines. Okay? Very important relationships for us to remember.